Welcome to the start of the homemade excavator project. Now it's not quite to a state now to really start, start, but it's to the point where we can start doing homework because I don't have all of the materials and I don't have the idea well enough in my head to really know what I'm doing. But I have enough parts and enough of an idea to start experimenting and cleaning up these parts that I have and learning most of all. In this instance I'll most likely start by cleaning up individual pieces and seeing what I even have. This came from the scrapyard, about a hundred dollars in parts here. I figure I won't really worry about ruining any of these things because they're just so cheap and it'll be a really good learning experience to refurbish them. I have a couple more hydrograms that are too big for the spin. I have a, a um, I guess it's called a two spool lever. I have what I believe is a motor. I have what I believe is a pump and I have a reservoir. I will not be reusing old lines. I figure the hydraulic lines is something that I should buy brand new because I just I don't want to deal with things that are like they won't bend right or whatever. I just want brand new lines because that's like I, I can invest in that. I don't want those bursting or something scary. And uh, in events like this, in projects like this, having friends like Arduino vs. Evil really helps because I've never really messed with hydraulics before and one thing I've learned since I was a little kid was that every single time a team on Scrap Heap Challenge decided to use hydraulics, they lost. <laughs> oh my god! The hose has burst away from the pump. There's hydraulic oil all over the floor. We lost the pump. We lost the pump. Shut down. That was done amazingly well. Not that. Okay. Clear. Rev. Go. Rev. Rev. The Meg's progress is slower than they'd like because they can only use reverse gear on their engine. Bend it. Rig's bending. Back at British Bodging HQ, the pressure is also starting to tell on the Meg's machine. Rig's bending. All the way. The Megalomaniac's crossbeam is completely buckled. But they did an amazing job of losing, and they were one of the most memorable experiences in the show. So at the very least, if it doesn't work very well, it'll be memorable. Now I'd like to do a whole video of having a pump and restoring it, and like actually like at the end I'll, I'll use it to pump liquid. But, I don't feel like investing that much money in it right now. I don't have the space for that. Because I have to finish some other projects to really have this like out on my workbench. So I think what I'll do is we'll just work on cleaning this up for now. Taking it apart. Because this is actually off of one of the machines at the scrapyard. Um, the manager said that, that was, it was really crunchy and it had just locked up. So the seals might still be good. And also I'm favoring this because yesterday I totally freed up all the parts so we can totally undo it. It was a pain in the butt to open up all the, the pieces and there's a bunch of gunk inside and I think this has a high chance of being revived. Now for the actual control for the excavator because I want to get the hydraulics working first and then I build the frame for the hydraulics. I think for, at first I can experiment with, to, with operating the arm with just two um, hydraulic cylinders and maybe I'll have like a jackhammer on the end and I'm thinking later on I want to have more like a four spool if that's the right term lever for actually controlling the excavator arm and then this can be used for the tank tracks for left and right. Yesterday whenever I opened it up for the first time I finally learned why he calls it releasing the schmoo. My gods, I didn't, I didn't know so much filth could be in a hydraulic system. I thought that hydraulics would be more of like a hermetically sealed thing and cleaner but I guess there's always gonna be wear and tear and little metal filings going everywhere. I have a bunch of these little links these go, well, whenever these go in. 
Let me pull that on there. But, ugh. I washed my hands like 10 times and I still couldn't get the shit out of my hands. I think the real problem, because he said the main issue with it was that it was just really crunchy and it wouldn't go in. So I got these apart and of course I really gnarled it up. But it was $5. So it's great for learning with. And this one was really, really oily. And this one's really hard. Full granules. I notice a lot of similarities to the solenoid valves that I was using on my rocket project. And so I think it's a similar design where it's a, a it's a plunger with rings cut out of it to allow for stuff going through. We have mm. that's all crunched up in there. Yeah, that's really crunched up. Inside of there, there's a hole. There's first this washer, then there's this spring with this piece inside of it. And there's this bigger plunger, big washer, and an O-ring. Supposedly they shouldn't be all the way out there, but oh well. And that might be... <laughs> you know, I'm going to get a socket set. Hey, it's actually working. I think some water might have gotten into here, but these most likely don't have much. They're most likely just meant to be a low pressure side. Because I imagine the seals in here are supposed to keep those up. Uh, like this, this is supposed to be just be open to the air. That's why there's a little hole on the outside. It's just a little room to hold a spring, essentially. So, where's my thing? Yeah, it's getting nasty. O-ring, big washer, little plunger with cupped indentation going towards that so it catches that little tube I got or that spring yeah so it catches the tube it's not so bad and then this comes out good luck in the back end I don't notice any wear and tear on that so that's good I just noticed a lot of shit on the end so maybe, I mean, it wasn't a scrapyard and it was on a piece of equipment that's always outside. So maybe it just filled up on the end. Let's do the same for the other side. Now this one is really dirty. So this has to be cleaned, of course. Oh, that was backwards. So that goes over that, okay. Oh, that's just like full of crud, okay. No wonder that didn't work. So that actually cups over that. I'll have to make sure that's like a clean thing when I put it back together. 
And inside there should be some more pieces. Okay. The big one. And the O-ring. So that might be busted. It makes sense if it was. It actually comes out now that that tube isn't stuck on that spring anymore. Did the trick too. It's like a soot on there. Whenever I opened it though, this was just filled up with gunk, so I think I don't need to make it super clean. I'll just spray some WD-40 in there to hopefully keep some of the rust out. Maybe put a piece of tape over the end of that so stuff doesn't keep going in. Because, well, I guess for what I'm doing, I won't be hauling like scrap metal and junk in a dusty scrapyard, so I guess it wouldn't matter so much. The main thing I'm interested in is the seals. Just want to make sure that those are nice and clean and they, they look perfectly fine. Just a bit worn. And it's not really that they have surface defects. They just have a different like a, almost like a matte finish. But that might just be how they come, honestly. Just most of the O-rings that I've seen were shiny. So it's obvious that these aren't new. That one has a little bit of wear and tear on it. But an O-ring is an O-ring. And for now, this will definitely work well enough for me to experiment with how this actually works. Right. And I also need to clean out this because that's how it should look and that's how it does look. Oh yeah, it's, that's nasty. Amazing what you find caked underneath a bunch of gunk. And these seals are not much better. Here's what I'll do. I'll clean this out. And then I'll go on the other side and I'll spray it out with the carb cleaner. And so then all the stuff will be pushed out that way. Oof, it's not great, but it'll do. Bada. Cleaner. Oh well. Oh, 
Yeah, there's some gunk in there too. Perfect. That's a nice fitting steel, uh, seal. Now my gloves are getting gunk on there. I take it the um, the seals might be popping on that. First, we have the O ring, then we have let's see big washer, then we have the cup, then we have this. Okay. this little washer thingamajig in the very bottom. Oh. And I need a bigger screwdriver for this. Maybe it's not designed to have this. That is strange. I'll definitely need to not speculate on this and give my viewers opinions because this is odd, at least to me, and that's it. it's just one direction. Hmm. Big washer. Cup. Maybe it doesn't fit over that. This might have been taken apart by one of the guys at the scrapyard too. I don't know. If that was there. That was around it. That was there. Well, it just, it just won't go on. So I'll put it on backwards, I guess. Strange. It had so much gunk in that little cup washer, then how did it go on there before? And how did it get that much gunk in there? It makes me question it. It definitely doesn't go as far. It's odd that it would be different on each side. I don't know about that. And yes, I, 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 undid, I undid these all before. They were on there quite tight. I 
would love to hear if you guys have any input on this. This is a this is a cross. I would like to know what BYD means. It's a a 4Z0052. Now this is obviously broken off, so it looks like that goes on there or there, and those are further away from there than there. So I don't imagine that would hook up very well because it's definitely not the same thing. So if that was meant to go on there, it might have a longer throw. And if they were having a hard time getting it in, they were probably yanking on it until that broke. But when I found it, these links were just um, separate. They were just disconnected. The rest of the system was the same, but these links weren't. Because it does go off further. Can't go any further though. In because it's spring loaded and really difficult. Oh well. Maybe it's meant to have pressure under it. I don't know. But I think I won't be able to actually understand it until I get some hydraulic fluid running through it because I'm probably going to set it up to where I have like 10 psi of hydraulic pressure and then I can just experiment with like oh that valve works or that valve doesn't work and, and then I won't be killing myself with 3000 psi hydraulics and I won't just be guessing without having hydraulics like I am now. I would expect that to go in and out though and to reverse the flow for each one. Well, I was going to have a longer video today, but it's 20, uh, 27 degrees Celsius in the workshop and even, even hotter outside. I don't know what the fuck is up with this weather, but it's definitely not April weather. So I'm going to go inside before I get heat stroke. Isn't it funny how in the summer this would be kind of cooler weather, but in winter or early spring, when you go from being frozen this just feels like it's 110 degrees because your body hasn't quite adjusted to the temperature yet. It looks like the next couple of days are going to be pretty bad too. And that's why I'm doing my homework now instead of trying to build the excavator and figuring out the hydraulics later because this little thing is going to be a pain in the butt. And the pump's going to be a pain in the butt, the motor's going to be a pain in the butt, each hydraulic cylinder's going to be a pain in the butt, because some of them had farmer welds on them, and if they all have junk like that in them, and all the greasy stuff, because it just poured out on my, my little wooden log that I've been using for a table outside, it's just horrible. Oh well. I would like you guys' input, any of your information, and thank you very much for watching. See ya.